Hey, kids, hiya, hiya, hiya. Oh, uh, worse yet, huh? Hi, kids, welcome to, uh, and Ron, what's the name of the show again? Uh, Uncle Glenn's Political Peanut Gallery. I got it. Uh, while you guys enjoy yourselves, I'm gonna I'm gonna study up. Hey, Glenn. Well, yeah. Would you do me a favor? Another favor. Uh, people are seeing this guy sitting next to you on your left. Can you at least uh, introduce him to our uh, viewers and our studio uh, peanut gallery, oh. so they know uh, what to expect in the second half of this show? I please. Was studying up on how to be just a uh, go ahead and do that. Would you please? Never mind. We get it. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and germs, boys and girls, cats and kitties. Today on our uh, show, we have Stu Rosen, the ineffable. Right there. And they're very old. And they're very old. Yeah. And getting older, too. It just seems like it's going to take a yeah. long time to get I, through. Well, I, I, I'm getting pretty old. I, I went to my 50, 55th uh, class reunion. Fellas, fellas, fellas. Yes. Can, uh, Glenn, yeah. just give a little tease as to what you know, Stu is so famous for, him and his 10 Emmys and a Peabody, for cripes sake. What, what he's famous for? Uh, what do you have a clip? No, or what do you, for that. Yeah, he is famous. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's you guys at home will know him for Dusty's Treehouse. Dusty's Treehouse. Come on, you guys. Now look, I don't mean to give you advice or anything, but can we just try something? If you guys will clap twice as fast, it'll sound like a bigger room. Go ahead. That's awesome, huh? Sounds like the Hollywood Bowl right there. Stu, you're going to come on at the halfway point and bail me out. Okay, I'll do my best. And then um, we're going to... I thought I had... Uh, okay, I like bananas because they have no bones. You like that? Ooh, ooh, mm, ooh, ooh, mm, I know ooh, that. Ooh, 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 mm, ooh, ooh, mm, ooh, ooh, mm, yeah. Ooh, 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 mm, don't mind me. Uh, what is that coming from the restroom or what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, that reminds me. Here's a little. I found this little toy at the at the uh, pickup shop, and it Aww. sings a little tune that I think everybody here will enjoy. I think it's a, a, an old Yiddish uh, anthem, uh, like, my, like my Yiddish mama or whatever. It's one of those. So yeah, it's one of those. And it, it, it sings, I only kiss, kiss, kiss where the sun don't shine. I'm sorry, here we go. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. The good thing it's green. <laughs> Broke his hat. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing a very important song. Of course, you can decide afterward how important you thought it was. But. That's my note right there. I got that note from Rin Tin Tin, and was he glad to get rid of it? Run! How are we doing out here? Oh yeah. Let me. Just, hey, uh, Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. Can you pull in real tight? This is. We're good. I'm ready for my long shot. <laughs> we're gonna make your shot a double. <laughs> See, the wines and alcohol made illegal. That's flowers right. and grass, yeah. like juice freaks get. Yeah. Hangovers and cirrhosis in the liver. Besides, grass is not habit forming like alcohol is. Besides, that cigarettes are much worse. Right, than man. Don't worry, it's got cap man. Pot. You tell him. You tell him. But you know, we go on the internet all the time with and without our trousers. Yeah! And one of the things we enjoy, one of the things we enjoy the most is uh, one of the funniest video clips I have ever seen. It is the, uh, our segment that we like to call the, uh, uh, 
Uh, funniest cats of Irwindale, America's home video. You know, it's like that, but it's like funny cat videos. And we scour the internet. Here it is. Oh my God, that is hilarious. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, can you beat that uh, with a with a stick? I don't think you can. All right. Well. You snap the whip, I'll make the trip. Now we got a song. What's your pleasure, treasure? Yeah. yeah. This, I feel like this uh, show is from 1951. Do you? Yeah. The first compliment we've ever had, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, I think kind of this bench is rather, it's kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, so I'm Most gonna, of these people here have never been around those kind of shows. Eh? I'm going to use some of this on yeah. the uh, piano bench and uh, kind of make it a little better. A stool soft man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is much better. Yeah. That is much better. All right. Here we go. Here's a little song that uh, nobody knows. It's all that stuff. <laughs> I got a gal that's mighty sweet with big blue eyes and tiny feet. Her name is Rosabelle McGee, and she tips the scales at 303 OG. But ain't it grand to have a gal so big and fat when you go to hug her? You don't know where you're at. You have to take a piece of chalk in your hand and hug a ways and chalk a mark to see where you began. One day I was a hugging and a chalking and a chalking and a hugging away when I met another fella with some chalk in his hand. Coming around the other way, around the mountain, hugging and a chalking away. Ah, oh, there we go. I think they're insulting me when I'm not looking. In fact, I think they're insulting me when I am looking. What is all that? What's going on back here? Well, Nick Burnaby, who's a social media director for March Against Monsanto, claims in some parts of the world the corporate giant's tactics are even leading farmers to suicide. If you look at what happened in India, I mean, there's an epidemic of suicides of the farmers because Monsanto sold them a cotton, a cotton seed that they promised would do a certain thing, and then um, those seeds didn't perform how they were supposed to, and it drove a lot of these Indian farmers into sheer poverty, and they ended up committing suicide by the hundreds and thousands even. Monsanto uh, affects farming communities everywhere. I mean, in the United States, um, they're known for suing small farmers. There's a lot of small farmers that they're putting out of business because they have um, genetic migration into, into crops that weren't supposed to be GMO, but they're getting cross-pollinated. And then Monsanto comes in, they use their government um, cronies to go in and shut down small farmers because um, their, their genetics from their seeds that they've patented have have slowly crept into the into the genetics of non-GMO seeds as well. Oh yes, it's the attack don't, of the don't, killer don't, Monsanto. Don't, don't get me into, you know, um, the kind of uh, food that everybody's eating now. What are they eating? Now? What are they eating, Ron? What do you got back there? We're gonna get some for the audience. Organic food. What Organic. are you talking about? What do I have back here? Bottle of hooch. None of your business. <laughs> Boy, he can pack them down too. I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, a double. Uh, oh, what a time I had with Minnie the Mermaid Down at the bottom of the sea I forgot my troubles down amongst the bubbles I know you, enjoy, I know you enjoyed that one, that's why I got rid of it But, instead we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have Stu Rosen and a new level of excitement that we haven't experienced up till now. So go for it, boys. Yeah, yeah but you were creating the excitement here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, seven, six, six. Eight, nine, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. These are the 
stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live or to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Hey, welcome back, welcome back. We are here, again. hey. What a wonderful audience. What a wonderful audience. We're gonna have them stuffed and mounted in the green room. <laughs> and uh, we're here to introduce you to our special guest today, Stu Rosen, uh, entertainer extraordinaire, producer, uh, and, 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 everything. and probably best known to you folks at home, uh, by uh, his uh, uh, Dusty's Treehouse. Dusty's Treehouse. Yeah, see, he went there. Clap again. <laughs> this, this is already a long time ago, from 1970 to 1984. Uh, the last four years on Nickelodeon, the other on CBS. Wow. So, um, and uh, and then I did a bunch of other stuff. I did about a thousand half hours of television, actually. And they're all in half hours, right? All in half hours. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, a couple of them weren't. A couple of them weren't. I did do one rock concert for show, Showtime. That was a retrospective thing. And it was fun. The rock It was pile. interesting. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, we're going to... Uh, oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Steve Martin. Oh. Steve Martin. Tell me your uh, oh, Steve, Steve Martin. Martin thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 was, I had graduated college exactly 50 years ago this month and uh, I had uh, I was fortunate I got a job uh, working for uh, KCET which is a PBS station and we um, fairly quickly and um, two years later I was a producer and I was scared to death I mean I was only 26 and had very little and the only experience I really had it was in school and uh, so <laughs> I didn't prepare, prepare, prepare yeah. okay. But I was very exacting. I was very exacting. So I, I, I did the show, the pilot. They bought it, and then I did one of the episodes where I needed a banjo player. So I couldn't find one quickly. So I called this friend of mine who was still at the university and Cal State Long Beach. That's where Steve Martin came from, also Spielberg, also. Um, and um, I said, I really need a banjo player. Do you know a banjo player? And she said, Yes. I know one, she said, and his name is Steve Martin. I said, oh, okay. So she gave me his number. I called him. I said, I need a banjo player. Would you be willing to do it? He said, yes. And we met. We talked. He was funny. I put him on the show. And then I put him on a second show with Paul Williams, the oh, composer, yeah. who I had gone to high school with and asked him to play, because he was very short, I asked him to play Toy Soldier on the Christmas show. Anyway, to make the long story longer, <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve Martin uh, has done obviously many things and has done very well and clips from this show were used when, uh, when he received the Kennedy Center honors. Oh. And, uh, yeah. now. Do you remember the words now? Yeah, dude, let's all try it together. Well, okay. okay, now, all of you sing with us, especially when we get to the toot toots and the wool backs and the high babes and the yum yums. Be sure and do all that with us, will you? And don't forget, ready? Wonderful. Let's. Go! She be coming round the mountain when she comes. Toot toot! She be coming round the mountain when she comes. Toot toot! She be coming round the mountain. She be coming round the mountain. She be coming round the mountain when she comes. Toot toot! She be riding six white horses when she comes. Whoa, back! She be riding six white horses when she comes. Whoa, back! She be driving six white horses. She be driving six white horses.
a little does embarrassing. Does that take you back a little? Uh, it, does ta it takes me aback. Uh. Uh, aback. Mm -hmm. No, it was, uh, yeah. Anyway, he, he, he was wonderful. He was great. He really was. He was very nice. Are you, are you solely responsible for his entire career? Is no, that how it, hardly. How it pans In out? fact, right. uh, no. Okay. And, but that was his very first television appearance. He had never Aww. been. And he and I went down together. To, we had to go down to the Union, uh, American Federation of TV and Radio Artists, and, uh, because the station was a signature, uh, signature to the Union. And I had to help him get in the Union. And then we had lunch, I think. And I saw him. We, actually, we socialized a few times. Uh, he was playing at a place called Leadbetters in Westwood, and I remember Nina and I going to see him do a stand-up comedy, and he was doing the arrow through the head even then, uh, you know, like, uh, when he was 19. Yeah, I reviewed one of his uh, shows that they put out, I don't know, Laserdisc, a little while back, and I looked at, it's surprising how well that act holds up. It's really, it still seems fresh. It doesn't yeah. seem like it's dated at all. Well, he, he's hilarious. I mean, and I, I was very pleased to see that he moved on, as well as Paul Williams, because that he was, at that point, he was doing music, but he hadn't arrived at the place where he did We've Only Just Begun and all those songs. You'd you think know. I would know that, but... And all, and all the Muppet, yeah, and all the you, Muppet songs, you know. Um, he wrote most, almost all of them. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Something wrong here, wait a minute. Okay, but Dusty's Treehouse. Now that's where you got yeah. your uh, big claim to fame. Am well, then, I right? and then yeah, and then what I really wanted to do is work in advertising. That was my dream. Oh yeah, really. And I couldn't get into advertising, so. But you got uh, into I got this. into the television thing, and then, uh, and then I went to uh, to do Dusty's Treehouse. They because they uh, CBS contacted me and they said, you know, would you be willing to do the same show? But you know, when I went in, I said, well, it's called Dusty's Attic. And when nobody in California knows what an attic is. So, I, so I'm I sitting in the chair, it. and I'm desperate to sell it, obviously. So I'm sitting there going, how about a treehouse? <laughs> and, and the programming guy said, fine, let's go with a treehouse. That was yeah. it. Sold it right there on the spot. Awesome. That, yeah, mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah, I, so. We don't know what basements are either, so that's... Yeah, that's when I was somewhat thinner. Somewhat. How about a lot? Look at this. Uh, I, I told I told you, I and mean, I turned sideways, and look, I'm standing frontways. Yeah. yeah, if only. Oh, <laughs> now there, your little, uh, your spelt self. Yeah, there's my yeah. spelt self. And uh, we had three little characters on the show, uh, the spider, and it was these were characters that uh, that uh, the, the, the puppets were built and by Tony Urbano, who manipulated them for a period of 10 years. And well, how many brilliant, was brilliant he the only puppeteer. puppeteer? Was he the only one? And yeah, the, he had some helpers sometimes, but yeah. he was the principal one, and he was, uh, he was excellent. He was uh, really, uh, really a find. Um, and then I had original music on the show by this woman, Barbara Rotman. And those two people really contributed a great deal to the show. And, uh, but then I created and produced it, you know. And it was on for 14 years, so wow. I mean, you know, uh, it's a long time. And I did other stuff too at the same time. And then, and I got my. What did you do with my notes? Here. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, look at this. This is this is his, these are his notes. That is. I mean, a, I had I mean, better notes. He's got notes like three things then, written on here. Uh, you know, here, here's your notes. Please, let's not have a vulgar scene, shall we? Uh, as a matter of fact, let's go to the. Some hey, 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 Glenn! I saw that note. Uh, what did it say? Butter, eggs, milk. Is that correct? <laughs> Good pre-production work there, buddy. You found me out. Yeah, butter. Oh, Rochester, run over next door and see if you can borrow a cup of money. Yeah. <laughs> no, I usually say when I go into the bank, I say, I have to get a gift. What do you have in green? <laughs> um, a um, little something in green. Oh, are, and are these their stews? Yeah, yeah, I went into the bank myself. I uh, asked the teller to uh, check my balance, and she uh, pushed me over. <laughs> uh, I like mine better. Okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, so, Ron's jokes are uh, bottom of the barrel. No comment. Okay. Um, what was what was the other thing we were talking? I don't even remember I what we were talking about. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, what a stench! Yeah. Huh. Uh, All righty. Well, we're gonna comment, do yeah. some stuff that you produce, some uh, political spots for some famous people who ran 
and and ran and, and ran. Ran. Yeah. Well, I, I think I need some psych meds at this yeah, point. Right. Hey, would you like some? I got yeah. I got plenty. Here, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Oh, do they have nuts in them? <laughs> no, they don't have. <laughs> These are just pure chocolate ones. Yeah. We're right. gonna have. Uh, if these are nuts, mist. they're very small. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Um, so roll some clips while we chow down. I don't think. I don't know if we have clips. No. I don't think so. No, yeah, I thought we did. Thank you. I want that autograph. And it has the autograph, and, so, and just put. I say, oh yeah, I see it's on there. And incidentally, the vice president has one of his balls for you oh. too. <laughs> Stu, yeah, darling, yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and set this up, the Ronald Reagan spot. Tell uh, Glenn about, you know, how you got into producing a, a spot for uh, Governor oh, Reagan. Yeah, after I set it up, go ahead. <laughs> well, I had, uh, I had actually done it with three, three different politicals, and, uh, and it was purely, purely somewhat by accident anyway. Um, when I was uh, working in advertising, uh, I... I was producing commercials, and one of them was, one of them was for Barry Goldwater, and he always looked very mean. He was running for president. And he was a senator from Arizona, and when he was running for senator after the presidential was over, and I, I always thought, oh, this guy's scary, <laughs> and so because he always had that look on his face. So I remember, uh, I thought, oh, this is going to be really great. So I show up, and he was great. He was so much fun, and he had he had a plane. I didn't know he was a pilot. So he took us up in his plane, and we went all over. We had to shoot these commercials with him talking to college kids and so on. And then after that happened, uh, I'm at a party, and somebody said, listen, uh, this guy came up and he said, do you do commercials? I said, sure, and, you know, produce and direct them in addition to doing the show. And uh, he said, well, we need some for Ronald Reagan because he's running for, se uh, for governor second time. Mm. So I said he went on to bigger and better things. He did right? much bigger and much better. Yeah. So anyway, so I said okay, uh, fine. Here's great news about two wonderful Baraxo hand cleaning products. First, Baraxo powdered hand soap in a new plastic decorator container. Looks like this on the grocer shelf, and like this. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong clip. My bad. Perfect. That's not the spot, is it, Stu? No, it is not. Baraxo okay, I'm sorry. No, he wasn't running for Baraxo. And here's okay. exciting news. Uh, he was running for senator. I, I mean, for governor. Second time. A little dab. Okay. This was Removes his re-election to governor. And uh, so the guy said, well, can you do the commercials for it? And I said, okay. So, uh, I, I, and we had to do some stills, too. And I flew up to uh, uh, Sacramento and had to photograph him, and I'll never forget, there was a lieutenant governor who was running with him, obviously, and I said, well, I need each of you, you know, one here, one here, three-quarter uh, view, and uh, I appreciate it if you do that, governor. So he, he says, well, you know that this side is the side Hollywood always chose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And why wouldn't you know that? Yeah, so, yeah. so I said, well, then we'll photograph the other side. Uh. So I had to move him over to the uh, over into the other chair. But when I got back, I flipped the negative and I got it the way I wanted. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, so I I, 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 I I beat him out on that. Um, and then uh, I did uh, commercials for um, um, George Murphy, who was senator. He was rerunning, I think. And uh, so we had to do those commercials. And and he was he uh, he was a song and dance man originally. Some of you don't know that from the 30s and 40s. And oh, we, this crowd knows. Uh, maybe this. Let me see. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, this oh, crowd yeah. probably knows. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, he um, uh, we did some commercials with him, and I directed. And he uh, and he was another. He says, "Well, you know, this isn't the key light that I need." And I went, "Okay, uh, Senator, just let us." get the right key light for you. So we faked it. We put one key light here, but we really, yeah. So, but he was, he was, he was swell too. They actually, actually they were both very natural and easy to talk to and fun. Yeah, I had a great time. Did he finally, was he finally happy with the key light? I mean, what'd you have to do? No, he, he was, was happy. He was oh, happy. Okay. He was happy. And then, this is the funny part. This is really funny. We got a call at that time. I mean, we're talking, what, 50 years ago? Oh. We got a call from the, his opposing, Reagan's opposing uh, um, candidate. 
uh, his name was Jess Unruh, I think. It was. Oh, yeah. And this friend of mine was running his campaign, and he said, we need to do a rally. Can you run the rally? Can you produce a rally for us? And I went, oh, my God, how can we do this? I mean, we're doing Reagan's commercials, and they want to rally, for, and they're running against each other. Oh, Lord. So I... I, I, I wasn't sure, but my uh, I had at that time I was pretty much of a die in the world Democrat, and my partner was a very strong Republican. So I said, okay, since I did the other one, then we'll do the rally. But I said, since I was a Democrat at the uh -huh. time and doing Reagan, you're going to have to do the other one. <laughs> and you're the Republican who wants to do. You're going to have to do the Democrat. Gee, I'll rally. bet that was a pile of laughs doing that. Well, it was. It was. It felt very uncomfortable to be honest with you. I thought, yeah, oh, I hope nobody shows up for me. Oh my God. Nice and, crowd, huh? Yeah, and we and at the time we just started our company and we needed money, obviously. So, we uh, did. so you'd even but take it, it from Republicans, huh? You'd stoop that low. Took it from both. Oh, yep, yep, both Democrats and Republicans. I see. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah. everybody got included. Yeah. Oh, good. Well. Um, so I did that stuff. That was part of my life. Um, I did. Oh, I did. You asked me a while back. I did. I did. Um, uh, Ninja Turtles. I did the. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, 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 yeah thank Teenage thank Mutant you. Ninja Turtles. No, 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 no. I, I didn't do the whole series. Uh, I got called and by the producer, and I remember I was working at Marvel at the time. And, I, and that was part of my life, too. I cast and directed the animation. And so uh, Fred Wolf comes over to me, who was the producer, and he says. Uh, Murakami Wolf? Those yep, guys? Murakami Wolf. Yeah. That's Fred Wolf says. Mm -hmm. I'm producing this show, and I was wondering if you'd be interested in casting and directing it. And I said, what, what is it? And he says, it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wow. I said, now tell me the real name. <laughs> <laughs> said, that is the real name. I said, oh, oh Stu, my look at the, look at the yeah. Mr. Clock. Yeah. He's, telling, he's got both his hands up. And, uh, I, had a, I, had, I had like three days to cast it and two days to prepare and record it. And because the, uh, uh, the uh, Screen Actors Guild was going on, um, uh, going on strike, and we had to get it done beforehand. So, to correct things, I'll make it correct. I did, I, I cast it, I helped create the vocal characterization, and I um, uh, did the pilot and two other episodes. But it ended up, uh, I took on this other show that failed. What was the one that failed called? I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> All right. You well, you know what? You wouldn't even know it anyway. I don't, it, oh. Uncle Stu, we're coming back uh, next week, next month. When are we coming back? And we are coming back. I swear, uh, it's a threat. We're coming back, and uh, we would love to have you be our guest again when we come back in another month and change our shirts and pretend that it's a different day. <laughs> Won't you do that for us, please? I'll think about it. <laughs> We got him hooked, Ron. Here we go. That's a funny place to kiss a girl. I said a very funny place to kiss a girl. I said to her, dear, right at the station, I'd love to see your destination. Farewell. Farewell. you so when you have gone away I said goodbye and tipped my hat and kissed the girl right where she sat and that's a funny place to kiss a girl